Hello friends and neighbors. Well, it's been about four months since I've done one of these, so I think it's time that we return to Favorite Books Reviews, the book reviewing series that actually got me started reviewing books on YouTube. And today we do the 49th Favorite Book Review, which is on East by Edith Patel. <laughs> another one of my favorite fairy tale adaptations, and it's based on one of my favorite fairy tales, East of the Sun, West of the Moon. It's a Nordic fairy tale that maybe not a lot of you have heard of, but it's basically, at least for the first half, kind of like Beauty and the Beast. There's a poor family who, one night, is visited by a giant talking white bear. This white bear says that he will be able to help the family rise up out of poverty if they send their youngest daughter to live with him in his palace. Even though the family is reluctant, the daughter is not, and so she goes to live with the white bear in his palace, and from there things kind of progress like Beauty and the Beast. They grow fond of each other, but she gets homesick, and so he sends her home for a while, and eventually she realizes that he's really a man looking like a white bear because of a spell. However, the story does not end there. On the contrary, now that she has found him out, he has to go and marry the Troll Queen. And the trolls live in the land, east of the sun, west of the moon, and so she must now take on an epic journey where she'll go to the corners of the earth, she'll ride on the backs of the four great winds, and eventually try to find him and bring him back. I like this fairy tale for a few reasons. First of all, it is an epic fairy tale. It takes place over a long period of time, and it does tell the story of a long journey. And also, unlike a lot of more popular fairy tales, it actually has a strong female protagonist. So East follows the story of a young girl named Rose. Now in this world that Edith Patau has created, there is a superstition surrounding the direction that the mother is facing when a child is born. So depending on whether or not you're an Eastborn, a Westborn, a Southborn, or a Northborn, you have certain personality traits. So Rose is a Northborn, which gives her personality traits that befit the protagonist of this tale. Northborns are restless wanderers. Now, East pretty much follows the story of East of the Sun, West of the Moon, with a few differences, much like you would find in any other fairy tale adaptation. First of all, the book is not just told from Rose's point of view, it's actually told from five different points of view. You've got Rose, of course, who narrates for most of it. You've also got the point of view of the white bear, which is interesting because in the first part of the novel, they play around with the fact that he's kind of fighting for his humanity. He kind of goes back and forth between the vicious white bear and the human side of him that's buried in there somewhere. And so in the early parts of the novel, his sections are kind of fragmented, just a few words at a time, like he's really struggling to come up with the words that he wants to say. And then when he becomes fully human again, that all changes. The writing becomes more coherent, but he's still not quite sure who he is. And so we watch that progression of him regaining his memories and finding his identity again. The third point of view is the Troll Queen. The bad guy, and I always kind of like seeing things from the bad guy because it makes her into a sympathetic character as we see that she does truly have motivation behind everything she's doing. She's not just doing it to be evil. The fourth point of view is the father, Rose's father, who basically gives us the background of the family and how Rose came to be born and all that sort of thing, and he really only appears in the first part of the novel. And then the last point of view is probably the most interesting. It's the character of Nettie, who is Rose's brother, who is pretty much an original character to this story. From a pragmatic standpoint, Nettie is there to tell us what's happening with the family while Rose is off with the white bear. But more importantly, we see a fierce kind of loyalty in Nettie to his sister, just as we see a fierce loyalty in Rose to the white bear. Just as Rose is unwilling to give up finding the white bear, Nettie is unwilling to give up finding his sister. And the strong sibling relationship between them adds another dimension to Rose's character. I love seeing sibling relationships in stories. I think more people should do these strong sibling relationships because it is a really, really strong and unique relationship. All five of these characters are written extremely well, they're written consistently, and they're each written with a slightly different voice, so you actually get a sense of who the character is that's talking. Another unique aspect of this story is the prevalence of compass directions. We've already talked about the superstition regarding which direction a child is born. But also, each section of the novel is labeled with a different compass direction, and that is somehow indicative of what's going to happen in this section of the story. And in the original story, part of the girl's journey is to ride on the backs of the four directional winds, the east wind, the west wind, the south wind, and the north wind. Here, those directional winds are represented by people that come with her on her journey, and they are somehow representative of those four different directions. 
But I think what I like most about this novel is that it has an incredibly plausible atmosphere. Yeah, the story deals with magic and the supernatural and beings like trolls that live in a mystical land far away, but the magic is actually downplayed in this story. It's not a constant presence, and so so much of what happens in the story seems real. And yet, it still reads like a folktale, and in fact, the story is set in real locations like Norway and France and other places, but they're given archaic names, and so it still seems mystical even though they are actual locations. And it is a fantasy, but it's written really realistically, and so it seems entirely plausible that this could have really happened. Now, the ending is a little on the schmaltzy side, but it is an adaptation of a fairy tale, and so I really didn't mind that so much. Overall, I absolutely adore this book. I think it's a wonderful adaptation of a great epic story, and actually, Zell might have a contender for my favorite fairy tale adaptation with this book. So obviously, East by Edith Patow is still on the favorites list, and I would highly encourage you, if you have not read it or have not read the original story of East of the Sun, West of the Moon, go find them, seek them out, and read them. They are wonderful stories. And the next book on the favorites list, actually the 50th book on the favorites list, features another protagonist named Rose and is a fairy tale adaptation of Beauty and the Beast, Fire Rose by Mercedes Lackey. See you next time and watch out for polar bears. Bye now.